listening to Law and Gospel on this Thursday, June the 20th in the year of our Lord, 2024. I'm Pastor Tom Baker, and with me is Pastor Wes Reimnitz. Good morning, Wes. Good morning, Tom. Isn't technology wonderful? Yes, it certainly is. So we can talk together. Yeah, KFUO had a little problem with the phone earlier in the week, but that's all fixed now. So that's good. He sent me an interesting article, Why Jesus Says He Loves Us But Allows Tragedy in Our Lives. Now, this email began with talking about one of the shortest verses in the Bible. What was it? Well, John eleven thirty five, Jesus wept. Yes. Now that's a pretty simple verse to memorize. Did you have your youth compromise memorize parts of the Bible? Oh yeah. This this particular verse in one of the congregations I served the ladies A, whenever they did road call, they would have to cite a Bible verse. And one of them always took Jesus left. Really? Yeah. Boy. Yeah, you would think the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want, or something like that. Yeah, that so was the, a favorite of theirs. So that was a practice you did. You would name the names of those present, and if they were named, they wouldn't say present, but give them a Bible verse. That was uh, that was a practice before I got there, and it continued on uh, that the Lady Society did. That's pretty good. Now, do you know where this Bible verse comes from? Well, John eleven thirty five is a lot of of John eleven deals with the death of Lazarus. Can you give a quick summary of it? Well, he, Lazarus had fallen uh, ill, and he was from Bethany. He was uh, the brother of Mary and Martha, and they they contacted Jesus and said that uh, your brother Lazarus is 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 ill, and they were hoping yeah. that Jesus would get there in time, but he didn't. He died while Jesus came was coming to them. Now, when Jesus arrived, it was Mary who met him on the road. Lord, if you had only been here, my brother would not have died. But even now I know that God will give you whatever you ask. Now, My Bible, my Bible says Martha. You said Mary. Mary remained seated in the house, but Martha said to Jesus, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. But even now, I know that whatever you ask from God, God will give you. Well, look at John 11, verse 21. Right. I'm looking at it. What does it say? Martha said to Jesus, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. Yeah. Okay, I thought it was Mary who said that. Okay. She was seated in the house. The reason I made that error, if I did, take a look at the beginning of paragraph three of our email. One, two, three, yeah. Oh. And you know what that's from? That's from the Living Translation. Yes. So, depending on what translation you use, that's quite interesting. Yes. Well, when when we're looking at these articles, one of the things I try to do is is go look at the Bible 
passages that are there to see if they match up. Now, it says that Jesus was deeply troubled. Why was that? Well, because uh, of the crisis that uh, that Lazarus had died and that people were mourning his uh, passing. That's right. And so it's at that point when Jesus goes to the tomb where Lazarus had been buried, he, it says, Jesus wept. And then he prayed to God and commanded Lazarus to come out. And Lazarus came out alive. And it says, many came to faith in Jesus as a result. In fact, this was the last straw for the unbelieving Pharisees. Why was that? Well, they were they had seen Mary and Martha and what he did and believed in him. And so they they gathered their counsel as it talks about it a little later in chapter eleven. And they said, if we let him go on like this, everyone will believe in him, and the Romans will come and take away our nation. Yep. So, what this email does is help us to understand what we do when we are in a crisis, like Mary and Martha were. Their brother was deathly ill. They didn't know what to do, so they called on Jesus. It's interesting the way they called on him. What does that mean? Well, they didn't invite him to their homes or or, or ask him to anything. They just told him that Lazarus was sick and assumed that Jesus was as their friend would uh, come and respond. So how does that help us when we're in a personal crisis, according to James 4, verse 2? Well, James 4, verse 2 says, you do not have because you do not ask. So we should always bring our troubles to Jesus. Yeah, you know, that, that, that reminds me of a hospital visit I made to a lady that had to have bypass surgery on her heart. Uh-huh. She was nervous and and apprehensive about it from the bed in the hospital on the day before the surgery. And we had uh, devotions, prayers, confession of sins, absolution. And uh, and the like, and after it was over, she said, "She says I'm at peace now. And I don't know what what it is, but she says now I'm ready to to go through the surgery." That's the goal of the pastor to bring comfort and peace when we have troubles. In fact, that's seen throughout the Bible. Can you? Recall a time that Moses had a problem? Well, when the Israelites entered the desert, they were passing through the Red Sea. And then they spent days without water. So they complained and and began to turn on Moses. So Moses brings the problem to God and cried out to the Lord for help. And did the Lord answer him? Of course he did. He gave them water abundantly. Yes. How about King Hezekiah? I like that one. I mean, I like them all, but this one in particular. 
Hezekiah received a threatening letter from the Assyrian army heading his way. It was a kind of a pivotal point for the kingdom of Judas, and all Hezekiah knew to do was turn it over to God. And we're told that he went to the Lord's temple and spread himself out before the Lord. Yep. And what did the Lord do in that situation when the Assyrians were surrounding Jerusalem? An angel of the Lord came that night and slew 185,000 Assyrians. Wow. How about in the New Testament? Can you think of an occasion when the disciples had a problem? Well, when Herod beheaded John the Baptist, the, the disciples went and told Jesus what had happened. And that's that's what... right. And so that's what we need to do when trouble comes. We need to set it before God. We need to bring it to Jesus. What does Scripture tell us about Jesus? Well, in Psalm 46, it says that he is our refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble. Yes. And Mary and Martha's appeal to Jesus, asking them for help, not because they had fed him and the disciples many times in their home, or because they felt Jesus owed them something. They instead said what? Well, Lord, your dear friend is very sick. Other translation says, he whom you love is sick. The appeal to to Christ's love. And that's what we're to do. Appeal to his love. Now, a surprising thing in reading the story of Nazareth is Jesus' slow response. Instead of rushing to Lazarus, he stayed where he was for the next two days, telling his disciples, let's go back to Judea. Now, why did he wait? Well, the Bible makes it clear that Jesus loved this family. Because of this, we might have expected the verse to say, now Jesus loved Mary and Martha and Lazarus and found the fastest horse and rode full speed to get to his sick friend. Or for that matter, being God, Jesus could have had materialized right in front of him, but he didn't do that. Yes, he waited. He delayed his arrival to Bethany. Why? Because he loved Lazarus. That that sounds like a contradiction. If Jesus really loved him, why didn't he go immediately to heal him? Well, when we face hardship or tragedy in our life, we we end up having the same questions. If Jesus really loves me, why does he let this happen? It's hard to see through eyes filled with tears. So what's the point? Well, even though we cannot see how a situation will receive or why it has come upon us, we can know that it flows from the love of God and is controlled by him. Now, I believe the reason Jesus waited is because Lazarus was not considered dead unless he had been buried for two or three days. And so... Nobody could say that if Jesus had come immediately and raised Lazarus, some would have said, well, he was just unconscious. He just wasn't dead. 
Mm. But Jesus waited till he was dead. Good point. Never thought about that before. That uh, in order for it to truly be a miracle, it would have had to have been three days. Yep. What does Ecclesiastes 3.11 say? Well, he has made everything beautiful in its time. Yes. Jesus was looking at the big picture. Mary and Martha had their eyes on the immediate moment. And so that's why they said, well, if you had been here, he would not have died. But we need to realize that the big picture refers to even more. And like at a funeral, we give the big picture and help the people to understand that believers are in heaven with Jesus. Where are the eyes of God on? They're on eternity. He focuses on what will make us holy, draw closer to him, and strengthen him spiritually. That reminds me of a funeral that I did many years ago. I had a lady that had schizophrenia, and you know, with schizophrenia, oftentimes these people have voices talking to them, and it had helped make a wreck of her life, and she went on to pass on. I started out the funeral sermon talking about what a wonderful person she was, never had a care in the world, and she was dearly loved, and and so forth. And a get audible gasp went among the mourners, like, do you know what happened to this gal? And I go, but this is how Jesus saw her and took her to be home with him. Yeah. You know, we're faced with a congregation a lot of times on a sunny morning where maybe a spouse of many years passed away Maybe your business is failing. Maybe your parents are divorcing or your children have gone astray. And so we often ask what? Where were you, Lord? Now, Jesus even cried out. Did he not like that? Sure. He goes, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? While he was on the cross. So it's not wrong to ask him questions. It's not wrong to bring our doubts to the Lord. There's nothing wrong with asking God why. As long as we don't do it with the idea that God somehow owes us. An answer. When doesn't it, say, doesn't it say in the scriptures, my ways are not your ways? Yes. Yes. And when Jesus was questioned, he did not correct her. What did he do? I think it was that, that's that's an excellent point. He pointed her towards the eternal perspective. I am the resurrection and the life. Anyone who believes in me will live even after dying. Everyone who lives in me and believes in me will never die. Do you believe this, Martha? Now, that was some real interesting perspective on the kingdom of God. I'm not sure a lot of people realize Jesus said that, that anyone who believes in him will never die. Because we think, well, of course they're going to die if we have to bury them. But why have they not really died? Because they they believed in, in Christ and God looks at, 
the people two way, two ways, dead or alive. Dead is is unbelief, and alive is belief in in Christ our Lord. So when you die here on earth, immediately your spirit enters into heaven to be with Jesus. Yeah. Well, in mean, Ecclesiastes, it, it says the appointed unto man once to live and once, once to die. The, the body returns to a spirit, which God gave it, and the body returns to dust, which gave it. So, this is the message about Jesus. He carried our weaknesses. Our sorrows weighed him down. And what do we do? We turned our backs on him is what we did. Exactly. So if anybody knows what it is like to suffer, it certainly is Jesus. He willingly subjected himself to the limitations and pain of the human experience and voluntarily put himself in the way of danger as he went the way of the cross. Jesus felt every bit of the pain we feel. Why would he do this, according to Hebrews 2? Well, for this reason, he had made him like them, fully human in every way, in order that he might become a merciful and faithful high priest in service to God, and that he might make atonement for the sins of all the people. Yes. Jesus entered into every detail of human life, experiencing all of it himself. All the pain, all the trauma, all the temptation, for what purpose? Well, in order to save us, it's for our benefit. Yes. Now, in John eleven thirty eight, what do some translations say? Well, it, it talks about... Uh, Means that Jesus was disturbed or angry when he arrived at the tomb of Lazarus. Yes. Now that's a righteous anger. To, to whom was he not angry? Well, not to the mourners or towards Mary and Martha, but uh, they're saying that it was a righteous anger? Yes. Because he was angry at death itself. Mm. He understood what a loss it was for them. And by bringing Lazarus back from the dead, he brought good out of the human suffering. He understood all too well. So we have members in the congregation who have the deep valleys asking where were you, Lord? But where's the answer? Well, it's always right in front of us that Jesus was present. Yeah, know, even when even a son he, would die or a right. child would die, and Jesus joins us in our sorrow and brings us joy. There never will be a valley so deep that God won't walk through it with us. All of us know our journeys through life and will take us through some dark valleys. That's the nature of being human. We have to face hardships because the earth is the kingdom of Satan. But 
Jesus will sustain us in our hour of need. And what can the suffering of a Christian become? Well, it becomes a, a powerful testimony to the lost world. It shows that yeah. he's with us in every moment of our crisis. He understands our days. Sure, we have good days and bad days, but he knows what those are like. And though we can't always see his eternal timing, we can rest on his promise. And what is that promise from Isaiah 43? When you pass through the waters, I will be with you. And through the rivers, they shall not overflow you. When you walk through the fire, you shall not be burned, nor shall the flames scorch you. Yes, those are the promises. And though we may experience some of that suffering on earth, we will never experience any of it in heaven. Thank you, Wes Reinitz, for helping me, Tom Baker, with this good email, Why Jesus Allows Tragedy in Our Lives. Join us tomorrow. God bless you. Listen to Law & Gospel each weekday morning at 9.30 on KFUO. For a tax-deductible gift to Law & Gospel, please make your check out to Law & Gospel and mail to Law & Gospel P.O. Box 28910, St. Louis, Missouri, 63132, or call toll-free 1-877-267-1962. Views and opinions expressed on Worldwide KFUO may not represent the official position of the management or ownership of KFUO, the Lutheran Church, Missouri Synod. If you'd like to comment on programs or topics heard on Worldwide KFUO, write us at KFUO, 1333 South Kirkwood Road, St. Louis, Missouri, 63122. You can also leave a question or comment on our comment line at 314-996-1542. We are the messenger of good news, Worldwide KFUO.